I was planted like many sunflower seeds in the soils of Obregón, Sonora, I be and I began to sprout for eight short years. My father was a migrant farm worker, picking onions and grapes like Cesar Chavez. My mother left her job to take care of three girls. Inquietas eramos todas, fighting for toys, food, anything our distraction caught. After five months without my father around, he came back to tell us he was jobless and wasn't paid for the work he did. Not even blooming yet, I was pulled from my roots and carried up north of the border. Held in a dirty old pot, my mother figured an American diploma would fit her well with her toilet cleaning job in a sense of loneliness. I remember I cried the first day of third grade. Eyes of all colors followed me as the teacher's hand signals grew impatient. All this for telling me where to sit. I remember being bullied in middle school by two girls. One was Macy, the other Francine. They would laugh when they threw their fists towards me and watch me flinch. They would call me names, like Vacha. They were both Native American of tribes who danced like the fariseos on the empty sand roads of Sonora. I remember I was the most difficult to bully since I didn't know English. I would simply study and keep my grades up. This was your typical everyday American lifestyle and I thank my mom for it. But now that I'm older, I dream of becoming one of those people, you know, the ones you see talking on their Bluetooth, meeting at Starbucks, and brag about success. Do you know what it feels to be labeled alien? Well, do you? It feels as heavy as the chains hanging from my wrists. It feels like the weights the Sipnot carries every day. The moment where you're forced by law to sit next to a sign that says colored. And the only way you can be signified separate is by skin. And there you are, watching people evolve before you as you sit there like a dog begging for a treat. Because when 65,000 dreams are denied a year, there is something wrong. Because sitting in that dirty old pot feels like you're young forever, and there is no list for me to sign at the bottom so that I can grow up with stems as high as palm trees and petals that reach for Apollo's hands. I want to know what more than 10 bucks an hour feels like. I want to know what it feels to get paid without labor and live a life that isn't frozen. I want to be superior, standing high above you with nothing in my way. You think this will hurt you, so you pay for smaller cages and try to scare us with your threats. Majority rules, honey, but minority counts too. Your thoughts are gathered from fear of pests storming your home. The world falls apart as your eyes gleam for only profit, and your doubts relieved solely by the same people still stayed of blood, still stayed in Vietnam, in Korea, in Iraq, in Afghanistan. What more will it take to stop history replaying again and again? When will you realize that these pests eat the mold in your forgotten addicts? I speak English just as well as you do, honey. And I know you're afraid of change, but I am not leaving! This is for the past over chapters, for the bent bookmarks and dusty spines, for the countless minds rotting behind walls lost in space and time. Not everybody has three minutes, so once in a while I don't mind showing mine high. I come on behalf of beggars who, when asking you for change, aren't looking for you to scrub a dime. This is a poem for not for profit profits, pursuing progress and changing lives, broadcasting live from the belly of the beast tonight. On stage, you see a man who, when he can't eat or sleep, he writes for you. For you. All right, guys. Thank you. Jordan, Jordan's man chucking all that shit from the NY to the problematical cities of Jordan and up to film. 20,000 fans. Exaggeration? Nah. Look at the African cities. The product is still alive. Not because of the right of exporting goods, but rather swelling gun importing bags. Now take a look down at the border. Our border. Juarez. A place baptized in the name of peace. And respect. 